So Lisa, what are we doing today in Puerto Vallarta? We're doing a food tour today. It's, no, it's not food. It's more than food, it's tacos and tequila. Tacos and tequila, and how many tequila tastings do we have here in our tour? Well, we have six drinks plus tastings. <laughs> and I don't know how many tacos. We don't know how many tacos. So it's, how long does the tour take? Three and a half hours. Three and a half hours. So it's going to be an interesting three and a half hours. Yeah, it's going to be so. lucky if we get home tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, they're going to pour us into the taxi and the taxi will take us home. So uh, we're, we're here in the park now waiting for the rest of the tour. So uh, it should be very interesting and fun uh, the next couple hours. And the name of this park is uh, Lorenzo Cadenas. And if you're ever in Puerto Vallarta, you should come to this park, even if you're not taking the tour, because the the tile work it's, is it's, incredible. It's, 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 exactly. Yeah. It's just uh, fantastic what she sí. says. All right. We're waiting for the tour. Hasta and luego. See you later. You guys first time in Vallarta? Yep. Yes? And you guys many times before. Yep. Yep. Alright, awesome. Well today I'm going to have the honor to be your tour guide. Today we're going to do a cultural eating, learning, drinking experience. The idea is for us to walk around Puerto Vallarta to get to know a little bit of the city, um, to get connected to that part of the local culture, and also we'll eat tacos, drink tequila, mezcal, paisilla, and have a bunch of fun. So guys, that is my plan for the tour today. I hope that you guys came with the same plan. Is that correct? Yeah. We came here to learn, we came, we came here to get connected to that part of the city, correct? Off to our first restaurant. With our tour guide, Luis Alba. This is obviously uh, the heart of the romantic zone. I always like to give you guys a little sense of direction of what we, where we are and uh, what we're doing. Uh, the Mosaic Park is called, as you can see, because of this beautiful artwork. The uh, a local, her name is Natasha, which is the artist that created or started this this uh, cool little movement. She got the concession from the government in 2017, and she basically gave all the benches up for adoption. So all the mm. benches were available ah. for adoption, and whoever wanted to adopt it got to put their plate, their design, their name, and hopefully it's going to be in the history well of our future generations in Puerto Vallarta. This is the idea that she brought from uh, Barcelona, and now it's here in the heart of the Romantic Zone. Again, what we call El Viejo Vallarta, or Old Town. Just to add to the fun fact, this uh, this area or this park or this neighborhood is called Emiliano Zapata for those that didn't hear. This is a Mexican famous revolutionary. This is the official name, but nobody knows it at that name as that name. Everybody calls it the Romantic Zone or Old Town Puerto Vallarta. And this park right here is named after that guy right there in the statue, Mr. Lázaro Cárdenas. You guys could probably see him a little bit right there. Mr. Lázaro Cárdenas was again Mexico's president from 1936 to 1940. And according to history, one of the best presidents that this country has ever had. Like I said, I, uh, we're gonna do uh, restaurants today. We're gonna do taco places. We're gonna do holes in the wall, mom and pop places. I, I want you guys to get a little bit of everything of what Vallarta has to offer. Not just restaurants, but we're gonna do a cool little balance between everything, all right? Let's go to our first place. In, uh, Joe Jack's Fish Shack, it's gonna be our first stop for today. Uh, we're gonna learn a little bit about the restaurant. We're gonna go ahead and walk in so we can talk a little bit more, all right? Welcome, I'll tell you also a little bit about this street right here and where we are so you can have a notion or sense of well, where the hell you are located in Vallarta. that is one of the main streets here in the Romantic Zone. Joe Jack's 16 years in business, and I know it looks a little bit American-ish, but the soul is the locals of Vallarta because not just the cooks and a lot of the people that work here have been here for 16 years. That's This is the soul of the place. Joe is almost never here. It's Jerry that's taken over. He's the manager, and he's been the manager, and I call him almost a co-owner for 16 years, and he's the one that's built this place up. He's a locatarian from Vallarta, so that local feeling is here. And we're here because they have a really good fish taco and they have a really good drink and I think it's 
That's a perfect way to start, yeah. to start our journey for today. We're gonna have a Baja style fish taco, uh, mahi mahi, goes in a beer battery, gets oh deep fried, and also we're gonna have a craft cocktail called Ancho or pineapple mescaltini. That's what I call it, which is fresh pineapple juice. It has mezcal, that is the star of the show. We're gonna talk a little bit about it, and a little bit of lime, and uh, and the rim, a rim of taquin, all right? Just a little sampler of, of, of the cocktail, and also the taco to start our day for today, okay? Is everybody okay with this? Yeah. Yeah? No changes? No? All right, let's do this, guys. Here comes the first one. Oh, yeah. Here is our cocktail, uh, or our first cocktail for today. This right here is called Pineapple Mezcatini. It's fresh pineapple juice, mezcal, which is one of the local agave spirits. We're going to talk a little bit more profoundly about what mezcal is. It has a liqueur called Ancho Reyes. That's a chili-based liqueur, so it's a liqueur made out of chili. Like this country doesn't have enough things for chili, we decide to make the liqueur out of one as well. And the rim, again, it's a rim of tahini. There's a section where it doesn't have it. You don't like it. Pineapple is pure decoration. Just eat it, leave it on the side. So, like we said, Mexico, salud. Salud, salud. Salud, salud. 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 Really good. <laughs> really good. You're never gonna make it as a YouTuber with just four. Okay. Oh, it's really good. Like I said, we have our first taco for today. This right here is a Baja style fish taco. Baja because it comes or it was created in Baja, California, here in Mexico. This famous taco right here comes from Baja thanks to the influence of the Japanese fishermen that came into the coastline in uh, between the 50s and the 70s. And also the locatarians with the local fish kind of created this taco. I mean, you put anything on top of a tortilla, and you create one of the most diverse forms of food that at least exist in North America. Uh, mahi Mahi, which is a white fish. It goes in a beer batter. It has seasoned cabbage and two salsas. A creamy guacamole or a guacamole puree and a roasted tomato salsa on the top. And if you guys are seeking for a little bit more adventure, this one right here is pure roasted habanero. Spice level from one to 10. This is like a, well, like a nine or a 10. <laughs> so it is caliente, but I do not recommend that you guys do not put it on your taco. Put it on your taco, it makes it taste really well. Alright? Okay, try it. Provecho, everybody at home. Look at the restaurant too. Alright, and the chairs that are made in black and pocket. Mezcal bar and grill. We're here in a, I want to say more focused on a Mexican tradition or Mexican food. Uh, even though it has a cool little flair, everything that they do is powered by a mesquite with charcoal. That's outside, you can probably smell it from here. Everything is fresh mesquite wood. It goes on the grill. I mean, how can you screw that up? Well, you can actually, but it's hard to. Everything gets thrown on the grill, and they also have a great craft drink menu. And that's precisely what we're here for. I'm gonna give you, like I said, training wheels. I'm gonna give you the craft drinks first, and then we're gonna do a little bit of spirits. We are here to try, or we're gonna have a double tasting. We are gonna have a uh, shrimp taco, or a sarandiado shrimp taco. Sarandiado is a is a uh, shrimp on the grill. It goes with the special sarandiado sauce, that is a shiote, like a paprika, herb spices. It goes on the grill, on a tortilla, with a couple of uh, aioli salsas, and some uh, coleslaw, okay? So you guys are gonna make your own taco there. And also, we're gonna have um, one of their craft drinks, which is this one right here. This one right here is called Marea Roja, or Red Tide. That's the translation from Spanish to English. Marea Roja is a reduction of hibiscus with red wine. It has agave syrup. It has raicilla, which is the local agave spirit. Like I said, it's one of the five appellations of origin. We already tried mezcal in a cocktail. Now we're gonna have or try raicilla in a cocktail. And a little bit of lime, they shake it and they serve it like this right here, okay? So we're gonna have the shrimp taco and also have the cocktail. Is everybody cool with this? People actually uh, party in the street. Let's go. Let's go. Definitely, definitely. 
is going to be in my But if you have to know about Bar La Playa, Bar La Playa is a local bar. It's a small little craft bar. Bar La Playa has been in business now for eight years and it's been a symbol here in the romantic zone. Uh, Bar La Playa is a craft drink place where not just expats, locals, everybody comes here. I This is bar where I hang out all the time. This is a great place to come and pre-game, pre-drink. They have great cocktails for a really, really good price. So definitely a place that we recommend. Today we're gonna try a craft uh, craft uh, margarita or a hand muddled margarita, cucumber jalapeno. And, well, it's a margarita. It's fresh, delicious, and I think it's gonna go very well. Also, we're gonna try a little bit of tequila because that's what we came for. That's why we signed up, right? Yeah. yeah. I like it, that's the attitude. It's the way that you drink it or the way that you drink these products, I think influence a lot in the flavor. Learning how to drink it properly, I believe and I know for sure it's gonna make a big change. Like I said, I've been doing tastings for quite a while and I've noticed that people do uh, steam it or they take them or they taste very different. Here guys, let's, let's get up a little bit this way. So we're not in somebody's way over there. So today guys, I'm not just gonna give you, I'm gonna teach you guys how to drink this. So we're gonna call it our first agave, our agave spirit training wheel uh, tasting, all right? I know you had tequila many times before, but today we're gonna have it a little bit different. Oh, sorry, ma'am. More? I'm good. Just a tiny bit. Right? You tell me as much as you want. Method or a technique that's gonna allow us. I promise I'm gonna give you better products, but um, we're gonna try out this one. Like I said, it's as training wheel. This is called the Quimador. It's a tequila. Nothing special about the tequila. It's a tequila using for mix. But today, we're gonna try to get at least a little bit of the flavors of the tequila. Even though it's an industrial, it's not as intense as other as uh, artisanal or ancestral, or the flavors are not that much there, you still can get or receive a little bit of the flavors. We, I do have to note that this is 100% agave, which is, well, good, because it's made 100% sugars of agave, so at least that is a really good thing. And I know I'm not selling to you guys, and I don't want to, but I want to do it, I want to teach you the technique so you guys can learn how to drink it without the agonizing, hurting pain down our throat and down our chest, okay? So we're gonna do a little bit of a technique, and we're gonna drink it all together. Listen to me, and then we'll do it together. You're gonna sip a tiny little bit of the tequila. So you're gonna sip it, you're gonna hold it in your mouth wherever it lands naturally. Please do not try to air your mouth or do this or swirl it just sip it and hold it you don't have to do very much you're gonna breathe in with your nose like this breathe in you're gonna hold that respiration like you're trying to go underwater so you sip you hold and you breathe and then you hold it like you're going underwater you take you it's gonna take you one second you give it a natural one second rest you're gonna swallow it and then you're gonna push it out from the back of your throat like you're trying to clean your glasses can we do that? Easy, right? Yeah. Let's do it together. One more time. Sip, hold, breathe. Oh, not, oh. Okay. You do it. Go for it. Go for it. Sip and hold. Breathe. Hold that respiration. Swallow. Breathe it out. Remember, there's a natural one second. There's a natural one second that you have to wait and you have okay. to swallow it with your mouth closed. Okay? See? Okay, let's do it one more time. Sip, hold, breathe. Hold that respiration, hold it for a second, swallow, breathe it out. And if you did it right, it's gonna go pretty smooth down. It's gonna taste minty, it's gonna taste peppery, it's gonna have all these notes. It's gonna have notes of a cave. What do you guys think? Does it work or no? Yeah. Mas o menos? Like exactly. Yeah. Does it work? Yeah. Mas o menos? It does work, doesn't it? Just gonna be here for one second, they're gonna get our table ready, okay? Okay. And meanwhile, we're gonna talk about what we're gonna try. We are in our third, uh, fourth stop for today. This is called Sonorita. Sonorita is a pastor or a taco place, but their specialty is that dish right there that we call pastor. For those that don't know what pastor is or have never tried pastor, pastor is a basically the shoulder of the pork. And if you have it, put on that skewer right there. It's been marinated overnight, and then they layer it on that skewer, one on top of another. Of another. Actually, this might sound or look familiar to you guys, or for some of you. It is inspired, yes, in the shawarma. In the late 60s and early 70s, Mexico had a bunch of refugees from Lebanon. Mexico took them in, and well, they had to make find a way of making a living. So they started selling shawarmas, especially in Puebla, Mexico, or close to Mexico City. These Lebanese 
now that they have many descendants, like Salma Hayek, for example, is a first generation of Mexicans that come from descendants from Lebanese, just for an example, they started to, well, they need to find a way of making a living, so they started to sell their street food in the streets of Mexico. And this became a success in Mexico City. The Mexicans loved it. Actually, we rebaptize the shawarma, and in Mexico City nowadays it's called the Arabic taco, the taco Arabe. And you can still find it, you probably, you probably saw it, you can still find it in Mexico City, and it's one of the gems of our culture. So, in a way to compete with the shawarma, the taco stands, the people that sell tacos in the city, or close to the city, needed to reinvent themselves because the shawarma was taking over. So, in a way to do it, they decided to use ingredients inspired in the shawarma that the Lebanese don't use. For example, instead of lamb, they use pork. Instead of a pita bread, they use tortilla, pastas, and we created, well, this beautiful dish. The pineapple, as you can see on the top, was added in the 70s in Mexico City, and nowadays it's well, one of our main dishes. It's the Mexican dish by choice, even though it's a mix of two cultures. According to Atlas Gourmet, 20, in 2020, 2020-2021, uh, the Pastor Taco was the number one street food item of the planet. Right behind us was the Pad Thai, for example, just a good example. I do not know who this Gourmet magazine asked us. Maybe he just asked Mexicans. I do not know. But according to them, Pastor Taco was the number one dish. So guys, we're here to try this chip of our culture. Are we ready? Yeah. Yes? Let's do this. And it's a artisanal mezcal, so we're gonna see how we're gonna see how mezcal does for us. All right, guys, this is what we're here for. Are everybody okay with this? It's the next stop on our little tour. Mm -hmm. try and get more yeah. We've got one more taco here. Uh, Lisa's got a Marlin taco, <laughs> as I do. There's a stuffed taco over there of 
pepper. Alright. Still on a little tour. I have some 4K power. Take out. But it looks like it says to take out, but looks like we're gonna sit. Ooh, air conditioning. Oh. And look at the art oh, on the wall. Oh, it's air conditioned. Look at the air, look at the art on the wall. It reminded that the hole in the wall is the one that has AC. Yeah. This is a sample from agave. Do not expect it to be a, a uh, slurpee from, from Starbucks. This is something that's been in our culture for thousands of years. It is. I think it's good, but it's something that's going to be worth trying because you cannot try this anywhere else. Actually, you can't even try this here in Vallarta. Go try to look for it in a bar, and you can't. It's very secluded because it can only be extracted like that dude is doing it right there. So imagine the quantity that they can extract from this product. And they can only make it in certain soils in Mexico. Close to Mexico City, like Oaxaca, like Guerrero, Puebla also makes it. And up north from us, Durango, Zacatecas, and San Luis. And that's it, because in the rest of uh, in the rest of Mexico, the species of agave that they, that you use for this product do not exist. They don't grow there. We're gonna finalize our, our adventure for today, hoping that everybody had a good time. And a good way to finalize finalize this is with a little bit of dessert. We're gonna try a traditional churro in the corner of Aguacate and Lazaro Cárdenas. Like I said, this becomes a very uh, lively area especially at night churros are available in mexico basically at night it's not a morning thing it's a night dish it's a dessert by excellence and it's very simple it's a uh, corn dough uh flour dough sorry with uh salt water and vanilla mix it make the dough then uh, fry it in the corn oil and then smother it with sugar simple easy and delicious there's parts of mexico that also fill them with chocolate or other things here in Vallarta, actually they don't for some reason Tradition is just simple churros, but there's other parts where you'll find them. That's Mexico City. Yeah, Mexico City. Uh, even on the, on the other things, I get eaten on the other side. But there's almost all the stands filled up. But Vallarta, Jalisco does not for some reason. But anyway, we are gonna end right here. A cool fun fact about churros is that it's a dish that Mexicans or it belongs to Mexico now, but it was actually brought in by the Spanish. The Spanish were the ones that brought it in. They're the ones that have the churro, but the Spanish did not invent the churro. It was the Chinese that invented it, named as a guilpe, and actually it was salty. And then China and that part of America from Portugal and Spain had a trade with them. So the churro got, got kind of introduced to that area, and then they added sugar, and then they colonized, well, here in Mexico, and well, here we are eating churros in the corner. But one thing I can tell you is that we definitely made it better. Oh, yeah. We, we so churros. how is your churro? Wow. The church even declares it a miracle. I gave you guys a little bit extra. Uh, I think we're all having fun today. So I had nothing to do either. So we decided, or I decided to do the nine stops. Today we did the uh, Joe Jack's where we had the fish taco and the uh, and, uh, craft drink, the pineapple one. We did the Cantaro where we had the shrimp taco and the, the hibiscus uh, red wine. We went to Playa or Bar La Playa where we had the cucumber jalapeno margarita and a little bit of tequila. We went to Sonorita where we had the pastor taco. Uh, we walked to Don Chava where we had the volcan, that crunchy tortilla. We went to Zapata where we had the paloma and the mezcal, number six. Number seven is Marisco Cisneros where we had a little bit of raicilla that you guys love. <laughs> raicilla and the, the, the local or the seafood taco. Then we went to Pulque, where we had a little bit of our cultural stuff. And number nine, last and not least, here we are in Churros, Los Churros de la Santa Cruz, where we're gonna end this experience. Did we have fun today? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Excellent. Did we learn today? Yeah. yeah. The idea, or like I mentioned at the beginning, this is an eating, drinking, learning experience. And the idea is for us to do a little bit of everything. Get connected with the local culture, learn some fun facts, eat, drink, and have a good time.